It's the best track racer ever. You can go and buy it now. Now, I was given early access by PlayStation. Big shout out to them. Thank you so much, my friends. My initial thoughts as I jumped into this game is that this game is literally made for everyone. No interest in cars? This has the best progression in its class. Interested in cars? Well, you can learn more about the cars that you love and the cars that you kind of ignore. Die Hard Sim Racer? Well, turn everything off and jump in. Now, do not get me wrong. It is a racing simulator with the face of a game. Games have always tried to cater towards both of these. No game has done it better than Gran Turismo 7. Never in my life have I jumped into a simulator and my wheel and everything just works. This game is firstly and primarily for its own player base that it has created. You can instantly tell that this is sport but super polished things added on but they're not small things they're significant things a game has been added on it really makes sport feel like a prologue even though we kind of assumed that was the case this fully right down just confirms that theory this is finally the gran turismo if you are going to suggest a gran turismo i would literally say play this one and that hardly ever happens in this day and age with games, never mind racing games specifically. This is the one we have been waiting for since five and six. It's taken all those previous ideas from those games, improved upon them, made them so much better, and also taken inspiration from other games that have released during the time, taken little bits here and there, and most cases done a better job than those games. This is easily the best attempt at making a racing game and cars in general fun and exciting for a super wide audience rather than normally it's either this way this way or this way this is maybe a little bit it's it knows what it wants and it goes for it literally from my own personal perspective as how i review and give form my opinions on these games the only major miss is that there's no story and even i would argue that that would be a little bit out of place in this game at least for right now i think in the future it would be super cool to have that but i don't actually miss it in this game they've done such a good job at everything else that i wouldn't negate points or take anything away from it because it doesn't have a story it it doesn't need one. First up, we're going to talk about progression because this is probably the overall highlight for me. This is what makes it a game more so than it does just a straight up simulator. GT Sport, for example, I only played a insignificant amount considering that I'm looking for a game experience and GT7 provides just that. The cafe is the hub as to where you'll progress and you'll learn about how to play Gran Turismo 7, how you progress through the world. Basically, you do events and unlock cars through the cafe. You'll start in a hatchback, which is brilliant news for anyone that loves progression. I'm kind of getting annoyed with games, giving you a supercar from the beginning and then being surprised that you play for five minutes, even though they've got all those old hatchbacks. I actually spent a good two plus hours in hatchbacks, varying from super, super small kind of compact Japanese cars into things like the Golf GTI, which I fell in love with. Golf GTI, Suzuki Swift, things I never would have bought unless I began with those cars. My money on the side, however, did kind of bump up slowly over time, which allowed me to purchase and upgrade a Toyota Supra, which uh, I had to snap up on the used car market as soon as that thing appeared. And the best thing is it didn't penalize me for doing so. I didn't have to grind some events to, okay, so I kind of did, but I chose to go off the path, do an event and do an event which gave me 35K, which was plenty enough to upgrade the Supra to the level I wanted it to be. Now I was quite actually wary of the initial it's giving me cars for doing events thing. I like to buy cars. The whole point of having the ability to buy cars in a game is to buy cars in a game, is it not? But it did introduce me to types of car that I just wouldn't have used. And that's what it kind of encourages. At the beginning, you buy one car, then you get given the others and you can try them if you want. It also teaches you about those cars, that, why they were built and if they were mass production or not, if they sold well or completely failed. And trying those cars gives you an idea of what different engines are like, what different drivetrains are like. The fact of the matter is, it is giving you cars and that might upset some, but I am quite strict with progression and it didn't annoy me. I was more happy with the fact that I got to experience those cars, for example, cars with 
different engine types and drivetrains and learned that some of them are absolutely horrendous and that's good that I managed to try it because I know I'll never buy one. <laughs> this is by far the best progression system I have played in a modern track racing game and it is one of the big highlights for me. Now on to customization. This is a big one for me again. I'm kind of splitting it into categories that mean the most to me. And so if customization is a big one for you, you're in the right place. Now customization is split up into two specific areas. You've got GT Auto and you've got the Tuning Shop. Both cater to different aspects of upgrading your car. Both very important. GT Auto is a place where you do a service, uh, you'll do a wash of your car, and you can actually also do a wide body. Fun little fact for you guys, every car I have tried thus far has had a body kit option. Sometimes it's not ridiculous, it's mostly just kind of fenders being widened, but the fact of the matter is, wide body for every car that I've tried. Even my little Polo GTI had a wide body. What the- <laughs> Why? Why not? Visual customization is, of course, another big factor for me, and you can apply many various things. Normally in games, you get two kind of sides of a scale. You've got Need for Speed with different parts for every car, or you have the generic stuff, which is like the wings on Need for Speed, or the Forza Aero. So far, it seems like each car has a few parts, nothing huge, but the parts actually fit those cars, which is really, really nice. I've yet to see anything super crazy except the Wangs, but it feels mega GT, mega Gran Turismo, applying tasteful mods to your car. In fact, being able to relocate or remove a license plate on the front of your car, it just feels good. You can really just make it your own. Now, performance customization is another beast pretty much entirely. It now accurately gives you parts that you upgrade on your car as in real world parts. Each part will do what it's supposed to do. It's not just a weird performance point system like was there before. That's still there in a way. It's more about telling you what your car's level is based upon the parts you put on rather than saying, oh, I'm putting my car to 200% of its performance because that was just a little bit on. You unlock better performance parts as you upgrade through the cafe events. It's super nice. And sometimes you actually get given some parts, which I'll talk a little bit more about later in the video. Installing these parts, however, can feel a little bit daunting. First time jumping onto the screen is a bit of a shock, but at the same time, it is properly there for you to dive in and properly tune a car, which is so much better than it has been recently with Gran Turismo. It, it, it's the most detailed from what I remember. As I said, it might scare away some newcomers a little bit, but realistically, it's designed for those that want to properly tune their cars. You can just whack on parts and hope for the best, but the majority of newcomers to the Gran Turismo series or to racing games in general would probably not upgrade cars as detailed. They would just jump into a car that's faster, surely. Moving on to another significant point, the cars. Now, I spent most of my time on the wheel on Gran Turismo 7, being literally flawless, which was quite actually a surprise considering that I'm using a Fantec F1 wheel. That is a pretty niche wheel. Not many people have that and it's hard to troubleshoot issues that I have had with the wheel itself, but it just worked. I did jump onto controller, but I had a bit of a problem in that the new dual sense triggers that kind of adjust. This could be a whole video in itself. The issue is I'm really heavy fingered with the triggers. Again, I'm going from a pedal that has about this much travel room to a trigger that has like this. I'm going to press the full thing down most of the time and it throws it off even more considering it is different now per game on PlayStation. Each game can fine tune how much you press it. This ain't even an issue if you're on the PlayStation 4 and you can also just turn it up. But realistically for me, Gran Turismo is a game I play on the wheel. So that's my solution. It just means that I probably won't play much on a controller. I'm sure you can get used to it. And you got to remember that the majority of the games I've been playing are PS4 games. So it, this new trigger thing is new to me as well. The cars feel great. And that's me coming from playing arcade racing games. I look for enjoyment in how the cars feel and drive and it kind of felt really good. And I'm just using hatchbacks for the majority of my time so far. The cockpit view has a much better sense of speed when you bob around the cockpit as you go around and when you feel more bumps in the road, when you stiffen that suspension, it's just, it, it feels so much better. Jump to the third person view and things don't feel 
as good. It has an improved sensor speed on the cockpit view, but the third person is still that really kind of staticky camera. I've yet to play with it in the settings, so I can probably make it to how it was on GT Sport was a little bit more motiony. It still very much feels complete opposite side of Need for Speed, for example. I understand it's not a racing game, it's a simulator. At the same time, the majority of people playing this are playing a game. They're playing it to be a game. And you would think the third person view would be the one that gets some motion and some because who's simulating with a third person view? <laughs> anyway, I'd love there to be some more options in terms of making the camera shake, adding just more speed, more wind noise, just little things like that that you could disable and enable. But that's where you get to the point of where this game is very much jumping. It's very much a console game. You kind of don't want to mess that up. Now, as for the car sounds, they sound great. The last Gran Turismo did a great job. They really just took all the cars, ripped them out of the game and redid it. There's 420 of them, more than 420 of them, and that's just launch. They added them over its lifetime, and you know that's going to go up. In fact, a lot of the cars sound better than their real-life EU muffled counterparts, which for us guys in Europe is good, good news, because my goodness, <laughs> they really done us dirty over here. On to... The multiplayer. Unfortunately, multiplayer is the area I've had the least experience with thus far, so I can't really make too many comments. This is for obvious reasons, considering that I'm playing it early, and so no one else is really, not many people have really got access and they're all playing single player. When it finally happens, I'll be able to do so, but you already know we're gonna be jumping into lobbies. From what we've seen on the early access, it's showing us that we've got the normal lobby system that's available in Gran Turismo, and it's using also another thing known as meetups, which seem to be kind of quick lobby systems, which would be super helpful to newcomers that maybe just want to jump into something super quickly. It seems like a nice way to do so. If you do want to join into our lobbies, we do do open lobbies where we just have a bunch of fun, different types of racing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you get notified when I go live or streams and you can jump in with us because we're going to be doing some quite a lot around the launch. Now, I did just want to touch upon some other bits. This is my other bits section before we go out, but this is ultimately the, the summary of how I'm enjoying Gran Turismo 7. I'm loving it. It's honestly, I jumped in and really wasn't expecting to fall in love with it so quickly, but I did. And it didn't have any stupid fancy intro with hypercars flying around the screen and everything. It didn't have that. It started me in a hatchback that was cheap and on the used market to note is that the game doesn't really work offline i haven't tried it yet because i haven't but we know that a lot of features do not work offline so you need an internet connection that's to stop cheaters is what they say shame because it means once the servers die this game's put it also does have some kind of forza style wheel spins i'm not sure how i feel about this you'd be like oh well grand series my sport had something similar where the daily objective yes it did and that was i guess if you, you were fine with that you were fine with this but I personally don't like being given too much stuff, but so far, the money and stuff that it's given me from these wheel spins is pretty darn minimal, to say the very least. It's like three to five grand. I haven't touched upon the graphics, but you already know, you've been seeing it the whole time. The graphics just look incredible. I'm still at the mind that Drive Club just has something that much that much over it. Very, it looks more real, more believable, but Gran Turismo, especially in certain lights, is easily... Just It's just mind-blowing how good it looks. The game does have microtransactions, so if you're against microtransactions, you're not going to want to support this game or just don't buy them because you don't have to. It's a, If you do something like the spin, it tells you, would you like to buy some afterwards or would you like to top up your money? You can do that stuff, and that's kind of going to support the game long-term. So I'm always on the like, I don't like them, I won't buy them, but at the same time, it means we get more stuff. My summary so far is that it feels like a racing game for everyone. Never before have I had a console experience that feels so sim, but not at the same time. My wheel just works. That never happens on a simulator. Controller, also a input that they know is going to be used. Probably the most, because it's a console game. I would love this game to come to PC. I would love to see it happen. The online only thing would make a lot more sense if that was the case. I just want to see crossplay with PC. I think that would be super cool. But Gran Turismo 7 is coming out March 4th. Thank you again to PlayStation for giving me an early copy. And please let me know what you think of this review or impressions video. And I will see you in the next video, which is more Gran Turismo 7. In case you didn't guess, it's going to be a while of it. <laughs> Peace.